When the lip hit me, it felt like a building was falling on me. And I knew right away that I was probably in for the most violent beating of my life so far. The sun starts to set around like four o'clock and five o'clock is sunset. So it's like slowly drifting towards the horizon. And I was just trying to line up a good paddle wave, just one wave to finish the day on. And if it comes, it comes. If not, just paddle to the boat and save it for another day. And around four o'clock, it seemed like the period dropped the tide leveled out and there were a few entries into some nice waves. So after seeing those waves, I was kind of like, okay, you know, it's almost dark. Like we're done here in about 20 minutes. If another set comes, then I'm gonna give it a shot if it looks good because those waves I just saw all had entries and you were able to kick out in the channel. 10 minutes later, a really big set came. I paddled over the first one, barely, it kind of capped out where we were. Come over that first one and the second one's already just like getting so much momentum coming at us. And it looks like this big brown building just marching at us. Really dark, the sun's setting over the shoulder of the wave. So when you're looking down the line, trying to analyze what the wave's gonna do, if it's gonna close out or have an opportunity to get into it, the glare from the sunset is right there. So it's really hard to read and understand what the wave's doing. And as it starts to build, I stop paddling and I start to analyze it a little bit more and then just decide that it has my name on it and I'm going. I turned around and was completely committed to getting into the wave after seeing the ramps on the waves previous. And as I started to dig and get down the face, I heard Kai and Lucas and Nate Florence and a couple others all yell, go. And I remember hearing that vividly. And as I stood up, I could see how much the thing was drawing off the reef. And it started to feel a lot steeper than those ramps I saw. And from there, I started to really just adjust everything and get ready for a really, really steep drop. I was so committed to getting in, I was really confident. Even if it got steep, I could get through the steepness and down the face. And then it got overly steep and went beyond vertical and I, my board is in the air. And I started to correct my line a little bit. I was trying to get a little bit of an angle. So if I go in the air, maybe I land and I'm projecting down the face and down the line a little bit to cut some of the distance off. I felt like I actually had enough momentum to go into the air with a lift and be able to bring the board down and control it and ride out of it. As the board corrected and started coming down the face, I was trying to pull it with my feet and I just couldn't hang on. It was just like an absolute nightmare after that. I fell onto my back and I didn't penetrate at all. It felt like I just slid on my back and basically slid right to the apex of where the wave was loading up and the lip was going. And it felt like it landed straight on me. Everything that could happen in a really bad fall underwater was going on. It felt like I went to like the 10th dimension underwater. It was so violent and turbulent, going from deep to shallow to just, you know, my feet hitting my side my arms hitting my back. And I was able to kind of find some sort of acceptance in the situation. And it took me a second to come back and realize, okay, you made this bed, like you better settle in for the ride now. I still felt really calm in like slowly reaching up, finding my pull cord, realizing it's, you know, the one on the right side recognizing that I want to pull it up to ignite both cartridges and create the max amount of air in my vest and the rest will go out the auto deflate valve. And I remember consciously thinking of that and then just settling in for the ride, trying not to waste any oxygen. When I popped up, I couldn't see the next wave yet. And I just couldn't gauge my distance and the wave was blurry and I was seeing two peaks, even though it was one. And that's when I felt 
completely different than any other beating I've had in my life. I wasn't panicked because I still felt mentally good. Yeah, my vision was kind of gone, but my brain was still firing really quickly. Like, okay, I need to get out as much CO2 that I had built up out of my body real quick and get a quick breath in before I go on another really bad ride. I remember being underwater on the second wave and knowing like, okay, this is really bad. I can't see that well and I'm getting fucking pounded for the second wave here. So if that jet ski is gonna be there, I need this board close so I'm not dealing with trying to reel that in and get on the sled. So before I surfaced on the second wave, I started to reel in my leash as I was coming up swimming. So the board was a little bit closer to me right when I surfaced and I was able to quickly get it, get set up. And as the jet ski was coming in, I was still seeing double and I couldn't gauge if he was coming on my left or my right, but I could hear him coming. And then I was able to find the sled, try to pull myself up and I could just see like a blurry third wave that looked gigantic too. And as I got on the sled, I got like one pull up with my right arm and he started to have to turn away from the wave and the board caught between my legs because it was so long and I just couldn't hang on. I gave it like as much as I could and then I felt the board kind of go between my legs and then it ripped my ankle and then I just stretched my arm out pretty far and literally fell off the sled right into the third wave. And in that third wave, I was getting completely annihilated again, but I quickly realized like, I need to ditch this board. Like this is it for the board right now. I need to get on the sled and get out of the impact zone. And I pulled the pin right before I surfaced so I wouldn't have the board with me to try to get on the sled. And then I was able to get on the sled on the third wave of another safety driver, Jeff, and cut the corner out of the impact zone and make it into the channel. And while I was on the ski, I remember telling Jeff, like, I, I still can't see that good. I can't see that good. And about a minute later, I started to have good vision and things started to come back and um, went through a baseline concussion test on the ski right there. That went well, I passed. And then that was the end of the day for me, for sure. And 20 minutes later, it was dark. I guess to sum it up, that was definitely one of, if not the most violent beatings I've ever had in my entire life.